Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at the Kelvin temperature scale. So let's get into it. Now, instead of using the degrees Celsius scale for measuring temperatures, we're going to be thinking now about the Kelvin temperature scale. And it starts here by saying the speed at which the particles in a substance vibrate depends on its temperature. So the higher the temperature, the faster the particles move because they have more energy, whereas the lower the temperature, the slower the particles move because they have less energy. It then says that the coldest temperature possible is minus 273 degrees Celsius or zero Kelvin. And in fact, these two temperatures are actually equivalent. So at this point, i.e. 0 Kelvin or minus 273 degrees Celsius, we can assume that the particles are motionless, i.e. they're not moving, so their average kinetic energy is zero. This is known as absolute zero since the pressure exerted by the particles in the substance is zero. So we can define absolute zero as the temperature at which the pressure P equals zero. Just to help you visualize this, I'm going to show you a quick simulation. So imagine we've got particles in a container moving about randomly in all directions, and this container with the particles inside it represents a gas. So if we increase the temperature of our gas, the particles will have more energy, so we'll move about more, as shown here. So you can hopefully see they're moving about more now than they were before, and that's because they've increased in kinetic energy because the temperature of the gas itself has increased. And you'll see the temperature here is at about 1039 Kelvin. If we were then to decrease the temperature of the gas and cool it down, then we should see the particles have less kinetic energy than before. So let's cool down the gas and see what happens. So you can see I've cooled down the gas to just over 100 Kelvin, and you'll notice that the particles are now moving about much slower than before. But we've now got this new term called absolute zero, which is zero Kelvin. And we've said that at zero Kelvin, or minus 273 degrees Celsius, the particles should all stop moving, and therefore the pressure exerted on the inside walls of the container here, and therefore on the gas, is going to be zero. So let's cool it down even further until we get to zero Kelvin and see what happens. Okay, so we've reached zero Kelvin, and we're now at a pressure of zero atmospheres. So we can see that mostly the particles are still moving a tiny little bit, and that's because in real life the particles don't actually stop. But in terms of National 5 physics, we can just assume that absolute zero is zero Kelvin, and that's the temperature at which the pressure is zero. And the pressure is zero because the particles are no longer hitting off the walls of the container although they are still moving about slightly here in this simulation. So just like we said in the notes, the particles have become motionless at absolute zero. Going back to the notes now, it says that the Kelvin scale is a temperature scale that starts at minus 273 degrees Celsius, also known as absolute zero. So we can say that zero Kelvin is equal to minus 273 degrees Celsius, because we're now saying that this temperature is actually the start of our Kelvin scale. So everything else on the Kelvin scale will be similar to that on the degrees Celsius scale, but just shifted along by 273 degrees Celsius. So because we've got this equivalence here, we can change between Kelvin and degrees Celsius now. So you might see some questions give you a temperature in degrees Celsius and you need to convert it into Kelvin or vice versa. So let's say you want to change from degrees Celsius to Kelvin, then you want to add 273 and this is mostly gonna be what you would need to do in a question. However, if you want to change from Kelvin back into degrees Celsius, you need to subtract 273 from your existing value. So we can generalize this into a relationship as shown here to convert between the two. So if you want to find the temperature in Kelvin, this is equal to the temperature in degrees Celsius plus 273. Or if you want to find the temperature in degrees Celsius, you do the temperature in Kelvin minus the 273. 
Note that this is not given on the relationship sheet in the exam, this is just a general formula that I've created and put in the box here to show that it might be useful to remember. The last thing to note here is that the units of both the Celsius scale and Kelvin scale have the same magnitude, i.e. size. This means that a temperature change in degrees Celsius is equivalent to a temperature change in Kelvin. For example, if the temperature of a material changes by 1 degree Celsius, it changes by 1 Kelvin as well. That is, a change of 1 degree Celsius is equal to a change of 1 Kelvin. So a classic multiple choice question for National 5 Physics is to say that a material has undergone a change in temperature of say 10 degrees Celsius and then it asks you what is the equivalent change in Kelvin. And you would know that that's got to be the change of 10 Kelvin because 1 degree Celsius is the same size as 1 Kelvin. So the units are the same size, which means that a change in one will be equal to the change in the other. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.